So maybe you're feeling that as well. And I'd be curious, chat me, tell me where you're at, tell me what your market's like. But I think that what we're all kind of experiencing is a little bit of a shift. And so I wanna just go through six indicators that the housing market is cooling off. And a crash though is not likely, I'm gonna preface this, a crash is not likely. Uh, what we're seeing is just a little bit of a cooling off. And, and how do we know? Well, other than what you're feeling and what you're seeing with your listings, well, we can take some data on a national level and we can look at this. So a couple indicators, let's go through them, six. Uh, and whoops, got ahead of myself there. So number one, number one is Google Trends. You know I love me some Google Trends and I'm continually looking at what people are searching out. And what we found is fewer people are on Google searching homes for sale. So 11% decrease year over year in the amount of people that are on Google searching homes for sale. Is that significant? Uh, well, it's 11% fewer people that are out there actively searching homes for sale. So I think it is an indicator that the market is at that turning point. Also, another indicator, uh, this is the Google search, sell my house. And the Google search for sell my house is at an all time high. Check this out, it is up 30% year over year. Uh, the index only goes up to 100 and we're at 98 for the search term, sell my house. So I have dived into the Google searches around selling my house and many, many calls passed. I didn't want to do that today. But quick reminder, when people are Googling sell my house, they are Googling sell my house fast, sell my house for cash. Should I sell my house? So those are the things that you can be making content around that will really speak to the hearts and the minds of the consumers. Another indicator on sell my house, and we talked about this on a few calls past, is that open door is trending right alongside sell my house. So what that means is people that are considering selling their house are also then Googling open door. Why is this important? It is important because they are giving that easy exit, that seamless experience. We're gonna to touch on the three C's, the convenience, certainty, cost effectiveness in a moment, but this is important for people considering selling their home. Here's another indicator that the housing market is at a turning point and that is foot traffic. So we can go to showing time for this. They collect all of the data on the showings that they have. And what they have found is that touring activity uh, was 24 percentage points behind the same period last year. So we are down uh, and foot traffic is down. So if you have listings and you're not getting as many showings, you are not alone, is not an outlier. This is happening nationally. Here's another indicator, and that's purchase mortgage applications. And notice I just said purchase mortgage applications. I didn't take into account the refi applications. I wanted to look at what buyers are out there in the marketplace applying for a new purchase mortgage. And that is also down 14% year over year. Uh, again, another indicator showing that the market is at a turning point. And we know why. Uh, we, we know why, because this is another in indicator. Affordability is at an all-time high and interest rates have also risen. So I wanted to show you this one, and I know there's a lot on this, but let's break it down just a second. The median price for a home in the U.S. is now $400,999. And a year ago, interest rates are, were at 2.99% pretty fabulous, wasn't it? Those were the days. And, um, you know, jokingly, I say I will probably never see those low rates again in my lifetime. And I'm probably not joking. I really don't think we're going to see that again. Uh, so here's the takeaway though. A year ago, financing the median priced home, a buyer would have had a $1,688 payment. Well, today, a little bit different, right? Now rates have settled a bit. They kind of skyrocketed up and they've come down just a little bit. Freddie Mac is reporting at the end of June 2nd, uh, the average rate for the week was 5.09% for a 30-year fixed. 
So I wanted to take that median price home and show you what the payment would be for the 30 year fixed loan today. And that would be $2,175. So you can see that it's a jump from what a buyer would have financed and their monthly mortgage payment would have been a year ago, uh, about $487 difference. So substantial affordability has decreased. Uh, Redfin has estimated that uh, there's been a 40% increase in uh, the, the payment that buyers are now having to make. But I wanted to also show you what the ARM looks like. I think that ARMs are making a comeback. Love them, hate them. I don't know what your personal preference is on them, but they are making a comeback. And I do think that we will see more of them in the future. So I wanted to show you what the payment would look like on an ARM with Freddie Mac's published average rate, which is 4.04%. And that same median priced home would be $1,924. So affordability is getting more expensive, right? Um, affordability is going down, I should say. And interest rates are, they're up. They're up year over year um, unequivocally. And even though they've come down just a little bit, they're still high. And I think that, you know, doing what, doing what the Fed is intending for them to do, and it is slowing down our market. Now, there's another indicator that the market could be shifting a little bit. And that indicator is price reductions. So maybe you're seeing them in your local market and it's not just you. What we're finding is nationally, uh, about one in five homes, so 20% of all sellers took a price reduction during the past four weeks. Uh, the week ending May, or May 27th, 4.8% of all sellers took a price reduction that week alone, which was a peak. It was one of the highest since 2019. So we are seeing more home sellers put their homes on the market and take price reductions until they get uh, that offer accepted. So again, indicators that we're in a shifting market. But like I said, this is not a crash happening, nor do experts predict a correction? And a correction is defined 10% more decrease. So they're not even seeing that. They're not forecasting that. We're going to have to keep a really close eye on the data. The last reported data was April numbers. And so we still haven't seen May. It's just still too soon. May numbers will probably come out in a couple weeks and are going to be really telling of what's happening with the market. But I think what we're all feeling is a little bit of a, a shift. And I wanted to show you this, um, you know, not to pick on us as realtors, but just to show that Realtors are feeling this and their enthusiasm about the market is definitely waning. This was a post that I found in my local Arizona real estate agent forum. And I've kind of blacked out the names of people because I'm not picking on anyone or anything like that. What I found was telling is here's a post that had just dozens and dozens of reactions to it and so many people chiming in and the post was really simple and it was just like, hey, how many of you have a brand new listing with zero showings the first day? That was, the, that was the, the question. And then just everybody started pouring in with their answers. And so many people just had input as to, you know, low showings, not getting offers right away. And so I think we've been really spoiled. You know, I think the past two years, you put that listing live and, you know, within seconds, you're getting blown up and you're getting multiple people through and you're getting multiple offers and you just feel like a rock star and it's shifting and we're going, uh-oh, okay, now what? And I can tell you that the amount of sellers coming now to through Zudelio looking for cash offers has exponentially increased. Uh, we have just been just, I mean, we're blown away by how many people are now looking for cash offers. And, you know, I think that the shift is an indicator of that. And let me also share that these are homes that are being listed on the market too. So they're coming to us after a week, week and a half, two weeks of being on the market and not getting that offer. And then they're coming and they're looking for an easy cash, cash out exit. So we've been kind of um, privy to a lot of that information happening. And we know that just speaks to kind of the, the feeling in the marketplace right now. And what I just want to share with you is this is the best time. This is the best time for us. 
you know, in any time of change, there is massive opportunity. So I want to go through quickly, uh, again, our programs and share with you uh, the three C's, as we like to call it, and that is convenience, certainty, cost effectiveness. And we believe that these three C's really drive the cash offers and these creative home buying and selling solutions. Here's why. Right? There's no doubt that we value convenience, right? No doubt. I mean, look at the ways that we do things now that even five years ago, 10 years ago, we were completely unable to do. I, I look at how easy it is. I was in Miami a couple weeks ago, needed to catch a couple Ubers and was able to pull up and hail, hail a cab from my phone. And it was really secure and paid for. And it was just an amazing experience, right? Very convenient. I look at how we can order our groceries online. We can do our online banking. We can set up our bill pay. All of this can be really streamlined and done easily. And it's convenient. And as consumers, we love convenience. And we believe that convenience really drives the narrative for the cash offers and the selling solutions. Another one is the certainty. And I think that what we're seeing now with so many sellers coming to us looking for cash offers, even after they've had their home on the market for a week or two weeks, is they're now saying, oh my goodness, I don't have a buyer yet. I don't have an accepted offer and I want an accepted offer, right? And maybe they're getting into a new build or, you know, maybe they're needing to have, you know, their, their home sold so they can go to their next place. Whatever the reason, we know that home sellers want certainty. They want to know that the house is sold and it's done and they can have the peace of mind to move on to their next place. So certainty is also a driver of the cash offers and the selling solutions. And one of the main reasons that sellers are looking for these solutions. And then the third C is cost. And I like to say cost effectiveness because see, you know, we're okay paying for something where we see the value in it. You know, I, I am okay paying for an experience that brings value and enhances my life. And so with these selling solutions and cash offers, the costs are disclosed to them upfront. They know what those fees are, and they're able to make that decision then as to if the benefit of having convenience and having certainty is worth the cost. And so as I'm kind of talking through the easiest way to move, as we like to call it here at Zudelio, and that's really what we can offer, what we power your platform with. And as Noah just showed you, we're doing a massive redesign of our offer dashboard so that we can really show you and your clients all of the offers and options available to them in a very easy, uh, you know, transparent manner. So of course we have cash offers, right? And cash offers are just straight cash offers, similar to a retail iBuyer, as I like to call them, open doors, offer pads, Redfin now, they bring you cash offers, right? So we supply you with cash offers. I want to put an asterisk on this because if you're really looking to prospect and you're really looking to, in a moment, I'm gonna go through seven ways that you can find motivated sellers. If you're really looking to add to your listings, then I would highly suggest you go into your agent dashboard in Zudelio, you click your cash buyer list, and you look at the cash buyers in your market and you prospect within those buy boxes. What do I mean by that? So a lot of the really ultra competitive cash offers are going to be in that price point, depending on your market. In my market, it's about 525,000 and less. And there's some other parameters, you know, like needs to be two bedrooms, two bathrooms. It can't be older than 1960, et cetera. So every market has a slightly different buy box. And if you're really looking to be strategic and prospect with Zudelio, Go look at those buy boxes and actively prospect within those buy boxes. Not to say that the cash offers on homes outside of those buy boxes aren't also good, but I will, I will share that we get cash offers returned within the buy boxes that blow our mind. I think there's no comp supporting this. And the reason is, I'll share with you, the reason is, is because many of the buyers in, in that uh, bracket 
are buy and hold buyers. So what that means is they're buying the home, they're turning it into a rental, and then they are going to hold that home for years and years. And so they're making cash offers based on rent, not market value. And so if the rents justify a price that's way over market value, they'll pay it. They don't look twice at it. And so keep that in mind as you're prospecting. You know, something else, another, another little piece I want to touch on is that, and I talk about the institutionalization of real estate, because there's no doubt that we are all feeling, um, we are feeling Wall Street coming in and buying up these homes and we're going, whoa, wait, wait a second, what is happening? You know, is this, is this good? Is this good for housing? Is this good for first time home buyers? And I just want to just share with you, if you look at the landscape, if you look at the landscape, the single family home as a rental has been something that's been prevalent for decades. So across the US, there are about 16 million single family homes as rentals, 16 million. So it's quite a bit of our housing stock. So here's what though, I think is interesting and revealing because I feel like Wall Street and these funds kind of get, get made out to be the boogeyman. They are uh, the bad guy coming in, doing things to the market, squeezing out first time home buyers. But if you look at the data, that is simply not true. Only about half a million of all of these 16 million rentals across the US are owned institutionally. So the majority of these homes are owned by your average ma and pa uh, tenant or ma and pa landlord. And as you're thinking through that, and even in your prospecting, keep in mind that you may encounter these landlords that own multiple homes, right? Maybe they own a dozen rentals. Uh, right now we're, um, we're working on evaluating a 19 property portfolio. All of the homes are owned by just a ma and pa landlord. And so you may encounter those scenarios. And if you do, it's a great opportunity for you because some of these funds will pay a premium for obtaining a bulk portfolio of homes. So if you have someone that has eight, 10, 12, 16, 20, 30 rentals, uh, definitely tell them that you can bring them a really good offer, a bulk offer on their entire portfolio and we can work to make that happen. So just a little asterisk on that. So do I think that Wall Street is the boogeyman? I, you know, I don't. And they're buying real estate. And largely they're buying real estate through one or two agents in a market. And so if you're not that one or that two agent, then you're basically getting cut out of deals. And so what I love about what we're doing is we're now connected to over a dozen funds. And so now we're able to reinsert you into real estate conversations. We're able to help you get your clients offers and we're able to help you basically position yourself still as the leader uh, in your local market. So I think it's, it's fantastic. We work with them. They're going to do this with or without us. And so here's a way we can be working with them. All right, we also have our cash plus offer, and this is a cash offer with the upside of the open market. Uh, great offering. We're seeing a lot of these get accepted right now. And I think it's because, as I have mentioned, sellers are really stressing out because they're putting their homes on the market. They're not flying off the shelf and they're going, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? And so they look at other solutions and that is a great solution for them to be looking at. Uh, the sell and stay offer is another offering that we have at Sudelio, and this is a cash offer with a lease back for up to 12 months. This really provides sellers with liquidity. So there, you know, I think we're sitting on average, the average homeowner has $185,000 of equity in their home. That's a lot, of, a lot of coin, right? A lot of cheddar. So I think what's happening is now you know, home homeowners are looking at ways they can kind of tap into some of that equity and maybe they don't quite want to move or, you know, maybe they're building a new home or maybe they're thinking of moving, but really want access to that cash. So the sell and they offer really gives them that opportunity to tap into their equity, stay in their home. Uh, another neat thing about the sell and they offer is that 
they do get the upside of the open market. So if the home should sell for more on the open market, they get that upside, they're kind of hedging their bets. And then I love this one, even in the market that's shifting a little, even though we're seeing inventory uptick a little, at least here in the Phoenix market, we have definitely seen an uptick in inventory, is the cash buyer program. And the reason why I am still so hot on the cash buyer program is because even when buyers have a few more homes to look at, et cetera, being a cash buyer to a seller is going to be even more important. I go in with an offer and it's cash and I can close in 10 days. That seller is really going to have a hard look at that offer. And I think that maybe even buyers will get some negotiation power back being a cash buyer. So think through those in your market and how you can bring them to market. And I want to share with you now shifting is seven ways to really find those motivated sellers with Zudelio. And how do you do this? And I know that if you list the inventory, you will last. And I think that's, that's, that's the thing. And, and for me, I'm looking at, and, and maybe I'm placing too much too much thought on the class action lawsuit now against NAR. But I really think that we could be in for some massive disruption when it comes to the buyer broker compensation. And how do you insulate yourself against that? And you insulate yourself against that by being a top listing agent. You know, there are so many benefits to being the listing agent. You can really scale, you can really, you know, manage your time more effectively. And so there are many reasons for you to want to garner a, a massive inventory of listings. So here are seven ways that you can find more motivated sellers. Uh, oh, let, let me just pause for a moment because I have a couple questions I want to answer. Michael, thanks for joining us, Michael. Good to have you. The sell-in stay up to one year lease. Could a seller enter into the one year lease and opt out at six or nine months without a huge penalty? Oh, you're going to love the answer to this question. So the lease on the sell-in stay is very flexible. It's month to month. So at closing, they will pay the first month. And then from there, they can go month to month. They can go 12 months. At 12 months, they can extend it for six. And at that six month mark, they could even extend it for six more. So potentially you could be uh, in that home, leasing it back for two years, all on a month to month basis. All right, so great question, Michael. And I probably should have went a little bit more in depth on that. So glad you asked it. Evelyn. How are you? How's Florida? All right. Can you explain the difference between the trade-in versus the sell-in stay versus the cash offer? Okay. Yes. So a cash offer is cash offer is just a cash offer on their home. They receive that cash offer. The numbers work for them. They pick their own closing date. Uh, the buyer goes in and does a home inspection. One of the things that we find alarming is the retail home buyers really nickel and dime sellers on um, the home inspection. And most of the cash buyers we work with don't. I mean, there are some situations where the home really warrants a lot of repairs. So there's a, a, a heftier repair request, but by and large, um, the, the buyer will make the offer based on the photos and we shouldn't see too much variance or requests asked for during the inspection period. And then once the inspection period is over and they've come to terms, then at that point, we just wait till closing and buyer buys, seller moves out. It's very simple. Now, the sell-in stay is a cash offer. But then we also have the lease allowing that home seller to stay in the home on a month to month basis for 12 months. And like I had just mentioned, they can extend that for six months and then they can do a second extension for six more months. So it really gives them a uh, month to month lease back. So if you have someone that is 
I, I love the new construction scenario for this one because I just see that it just makes so much sense. If you're building a new home and you just aren't quite sure when it's going to be ready, but you, you know, maybe, maybe the builder forced you to clear your contingency, right? Like maybe you had no other choice or maybe you just want that peace of mind because, um, you know, you're, you're not sure how long it's going to take to sell, et cetera. So great option. I also think that we're going to see a lot of people that take this and they, they really aren't, they don't have plans for the future. I think that we're going to lot of, see a lot of people take the sell and stay offer and then kind of figure out what they're doing from there. Uh, it just gives them that cash. I think people are going to be tapping into that equity more and more. And this is a way for them to tap into that equity. You know, they get, they get liquidated. They're able to stay in their home. They're able to, uh, you know, kind of maintain that lifestyle that they've been living. And so I think that that's going to be a really, um, it's going to be really interesting to see the sell and stay kind of uh, gain more, more market share. And then the trade-in. So I had just talked a moment ago about the become a cash buyer. So the trade-in is basically the cash offer, right? For the home that they're selling. And then it's using the cash buyer program on the home that they're buying. And it's those two programs working together. So on the home trade-in, you would use that in a scenario where a seller is selling and buying. So I hope that clears up some of the questions. Um, and, and I should dive deeper into the trade-in. I don't always uh, use that one. The programs, it's just those two programs working together and in unison. All right. How can you find more motivated sellers? Well, here's the thing too. We've been really spoiled, haven't we? We've been really spoiled with, with our listings and them flying off the shelf. So keep in mind that as you're finding these sellers and as you're gaining this listing inventory, you're going to have to put a pretty robust uh, plan in place for you know, doing, doing market updates, your marketing plan, sharing that with the seller, getting those price reductions, which you all know all of that. You're ready for it. And now is your time because there's a ton of opportunity. As you just saw from that post, we have a ton of agents that are kind of, I don't want to say freaking out, but agents are getting nervous and they're starting to go like, whoa, what's happening? What do I do? And so I think that in these uncertain times, you put your head down, you sharpen your pencil and you work and you work hard and you get more inventory uh, and you really build your business during these uncertain times because a lot of us won't, you know? Uncertainty is an interesting thing. Fear is an interesting thing. And many times it's immobilizing. And so what's going to happen is there's going to be a ton of realtors out there that don't end up doing anything because there's fear of the unknown, fear of the changing market conditions. So how can you find them? Well, the number one way is your database. And I put this number one strategically, and it's the only one that I put number one strategically. The others you know, the, the rest of them that we're going to go through today, you can interchange them. But I think your database is the first place you start. And here's why. These people already know you. They already like you. They already trust you. And you'd be amazed at how many of these individuals are also getting, they're getting the ads. Um, who here is getting ads for Orchard? I know I am. I must get probably five to nine ads from Orchard every time I'm on something. And Orchard is, they're a lender and a broker and the, they're an iBuyer buyer and a power buyer and they're together and they're full force in the marketplace. They just raised another hundred million and they're coming in and they're bringing these value propositions to the market, the buy before you sell, um, all of the value propositions just named something a little bit different, but they're doing this at scale. And if we think that our clients, the people in our database are not getting these messages and getting these ads, we'd be lying to ourselves, right? Like we know that they're getting this messaging. 
And so you have to combat this and you have to let your people know that you have the easy options as well. You can give them certainty, convenience, cost effectiveness. You have those options in your tool belt. It is, you know, you are not just a traditional agent. You also have access to all of the new ways that they can buy and sell real estate. So I think it is extremely important. I know many of you are on the I am platform and that has been uh, in beta. And we purposefully kept it small and in beta because it's, it's new and we're basically mark, remarketing to databases using um, AI. And so it's, it's really cool, but we're at this point, I don't think we're opening it up entirely. So if you're interested in joining, I am, uh, you can always email, email me, email Elliot, email support and let us know. And we can uh, put you on that list to get you in. And the reason why it's in beta is because it's, it's new and there's still, there's still bugs. There's still kinks we're working out. We're still duct taping things together. And so we're really trying to get that uh, proven before we release it to everybody. But you probably have some sort of database management system. How are you deploying these value propositions out into your database? And are you? Because it's a massive opportunity and I think it's the number one opportunity. And I wouldn't spend a dime or do anything else until I had deployed these propositions out into my database. The second way you can find more motivated sellers with the Zufilio system is if you're geo farming, you can deploy these propositions directly to the people that you're already marketing to, right? So like if you're, if you're already working in an area, if you're already priming, weave these value propositions into it. Again, people are getting the messaging from the, the big billion dollar companies. So they're aware of these value propositions. Show them that their local expert, the person that they've grown to know and that they like and that they're trusting, show them that that individual, that local listing agent being you can also give them those value propositions. Uh, we do have an integration in Zudelio uh, with CoreFact and you can send out postcards to a geographical area, et cetera. If you don't wanna do it through CoreFact and you access this through your agent dashboard, if you click printables under marketing materials, it'll pop you up here. If you're just maybe wanting the postcards, we'll get you them. You can, you know, Kai here sends them out to people all the time if you just want these postcards. But the point is, is bring these value propositions to that market that you're target marketing. And then here's one that I think is very uh, lucrative because we, we know that if a home sells, right, within 200 homes, like, more will sell. There's, there's, I don't know the exact data on it, so I'm not going to BS you, but there is data on that. And so what we know is, is if a home sells, you can remarket the home surrounding that home sold, and you know that likely you're going to have another seller. And so here's a sample script that you could use if you're wanting to circle prospect uh, homes around a recently sold. And very, very simple. I would use text. I think that... Um, nobody answers their phone anymore, right? Like I don't, and maybe you do, but I would say that by and large, we, we are not answering our phone. We're letting our phones go to voicemail. We're screening our calls, but what do we all do? We all open our text messages. And so I would text these out. And here's a sample script, very, very simple. Uh, you could even put your cash offer website in there, right? So you could even put that site in there um, and very simple script. And be looking for canceled and expired listings. And I know what you're thinking. There aren't any, Kayla. My market's been so hot. There aren't any. Well, that's simply untrue. There are cancels. There are expireds. Maybe there are any recent cancels, expireds. Maybe you go back four years ago. Maybe you go back five years and you find the canceled and expireds five years ago and you find the ones that have not relisted and resold, right? So find them. You can target them. We know that at some point they had wanted to sell their home and they didn't. And you can get in front of them with one of these easy options. Here's a sample script that you could use for them and send out to them, letting them know that you have a cash buyer that would like to make an offer on their home. Uh, again, even include your link. 
you know, give them the ability to go straight to your website and enter in their address and request those cash offers. And the next way you can find more listings is through probate. And you'd be amazed at how many homeowners of a home they acquired through probate take these cash offers. They don't want to deal with it. Many times we don't even live in the same market. And so having these easy options, easy outs is wonderful for them. You know, it's great for you to deploy your value proposition to them. Uh, you could, if you find them, I know uh, we are seeing a lot of success with batch leads and batch leads is one way that you can find the probate leads and you can, through that system, message them. Uh, you can also do a letter. This can be very effective as well. Do a letter, of course, to the person who, not directly to the home, probate. So I would do it to uh, the decision maker on that. So a sample letter that you could send out, very simple. Maybe even put your QR code on it so they could scan it. And then another way is the lates. We are seeing lates. I don't think we're going to see this huge foreclosure wave. I think that homeowners have so much equity in their home that Anyone in trouble is probably going to be able to get out of that trouble and, and sell and clear and walk away with a little bit of cash. And so you can help these people that are in a situation to where, you know, maybe they need to get out of this situation and you can bring them this cash offer that will allow them to do it. And if I were to send this out, I wouldn't say, hey, I know you're late on your, your mortgage. I would go at it from a different angle. I would go at it from, hey, I have several cash buyers that are purchasing homes in your neighborhood. And would you be interested in selling um, in the next 60 to 90 days if the cash offer was good? All right. And the seventh way is absentee owners. I love this one. I love this one because, well, I know that these change hands all the time. And I want you to be able to make contact with these individuals and bring them cash offers and make those relationships that you can help them with their real estate needs. And here's another sample script that you could use for this. Hey, I have a cash buyer. I'd like to make an offer on your property. Very simple. Um, they will even make an offer with tenants in place or they'll even purchase with tenants in place. I think that's important to put in uh, because many of these homes are rentals. And if there's a tenant in place, uh, you know, they're going to be wondering, well, hey, I got a tenant lease isn't up, et cetera. So you just combat that with the message, letting them know, hey, I got a cash buyer. They'll buy with a tenant in place. Have you had any thoughts of selling? You could even add your link, right? Go to my site to get your free offers. So those are seven ways that you can really get out there and get more listings. You got to find them. And I use the word find strategically because it is finding and um, and I think that that's important, especially in these changing market times. Here's a quote from Mark Cuban. He said, wherever there is change and wherever there is uncertainty, there is opportunity. And I think we could all agree there's a lot of change right now and there's a lot of uncertainty, which means there is massive opportunity. I get so excited. Hey, thanks for being with me today. Next week, I'm going to bring on Jeremy. He's in our offers department. He's going to talk a little bit about what you can expect when you request offers from Zudelio. So I'm really excited about next Monday and having him on. And between now and then, my question for you is, what are you committed to doing? What action are you committed to taking this week to grow your business? It really is that simple. Write it down. Do not let the week expire on you without taking those actions that you, you made, that you committed to yourself to make. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. We're really excited about the path that we're on at Zudelio and excited to just serve and support in any way that we can. If you have any questions for us, you guys know how to reach me. Um, my email is my first name, Kayla, K-A-L-A at zudelio.com. Um, and we just love to connect and help you take your business to the next level. So everybody have a fantastic week and I will see you next Monday.